to do is kind of transition a little bit into the idea of, okay, anthropology is a study of humans. This might seem to sound like a funny question, but when you go to another place, how do you know that the other people you are visiting are humans? Or how would you know that, you know, how would you know a, another human when you see one? And, uh, you know, we can think about this because in some ways when, when other people traveled perhaps in the in, in the early days, that was a question on their mind. How far did the, the boundaries of humanity extend? Were other people, people equally human to whoever was in your group and who you considered to be um, as human as yourself? So if we went to a different place, how would we know that other people were human? As we talked about, one of the key uh, things is sort of the bio, what we might consider the biological or characteristics of human beings that we have certain biological features and we generally expect to see other bipedal creatures as part of being human. So people who are walking around, we might uh, be looking for something to eat. And so, you know, something that we share as human beings is we're all going to need to eat and to drink. And so that might be one of the first things that we find when we get to a new place. We'll want to know what those people are eating or drinking because after a while we're gonna run out of our own food and going to have to uh, ask for food from someone else. We also can probably tell that they have some form of language or communication. This is something that people do all over the world is uh, talk and communicate in various ways with each other. So this is something how we know people are being human and are, are human like us, we might say. Are they, people have all different kinds of clothing. The clothing has been some form of uh, dress has been a human universal for uh, many, many thousands of years. So we're expecting that uh, people will have some form of, form of dress or clothing, that they'll be using tools. As we discussed before, tool use has been uh, evident in the archeological record for two to three million years. And so that's how we interact with what we may, might consider our natural world is through tool use. Also, we'll probably be pretty soon looking for somewhere to shelter or somewhere to sleep and all human beings make shelter and have to, of course, sleep and there's various uh, forms of housing, but that's going to be something that we'll be looking for as an indication that we're dealing with humans who are humans just like us. Also, humans are social creatures. Like other primates, we have friendships and we have kinship relationships. And of course, to keep the human family going, we have to have reproductive relationships so that the group will continue. If we don't, we won't be, won't be a group for very long. We have to keep, keep on reproducing. Uh, linked to the idea of language, all humans and engage in some form of storytelling. They have beliefs. We'll later talk about supernaturalism or ideas about religion. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a human universal to uh, have religion per se, but some form of belief, some form of idea of what is right or wrong, some sort of morality is something that we usually expect about other human beings. The funny thing is, or I mean, I guess that that I would say that, that one of the founding issues of anthropology is how are people the same? What are the universals, the things that make us all human or what we may, might consider similarities across all humans? And what are the differences or the particularities or things that make people different from each other so that we might question, well, do all people do this? And oftentimes the answer is no, but there's, you know, obviously a lot of things that all people share, but there's things that make people different as well. One of the key insights of anthropology is that the things that make us similar to each other, what we might consider human universals, are also the things that we most talk about when it comes to distinguishing ourselves from each other. So if you think about the things that we just talked about, so you're going to be looking or thinking about what to eat. And of course, 
what people eat is one of the things that we most comment on about what makes us different from each other. So the things that uh, we might consider good to eat will be considered hardly edible in another society. Language. We expect other people to communicate. But as soon as you travel to another society, es posible que no entiendan lo que están diciendo. And all of a sudden you're caught not knowing what exactly people are saying in this other society unless you happen to have studied that language before in school, you'll be tempted to, to think that the language is something that separates you rather than bringing you together. Similarly with clothing, different styles of clothing, what people might consider to be clothing at all, differs from society to society. Tool use, how people make friendships, how people reproduce, all of these things are things that we comment on as making people different. In fact, it's hard to say that there is some sort of absolute measure of similarity or difference. There are often societies that are very close to each other and share a tremendous amount, but they would distinguish themselves, they're very close together, but they, they distinguish themselves from each other based on the smallest of particularities or what we might call from the outside very tiny things they would consider to be huge differences. So there's not sort of some sort of absolute measure that we can say, oh, humans are the same, all the same in this way or different. There's not a sort of a universal scale for that because we're always thinking about it and either accentuating our differences if that's what we want to accentuate or saying, oh, we're all the same if we're in the mood to be uh, accentuating our similarities. One of the common characteristics of human societies is what anthropologists call ethnocentrism. And that's the idea that your own way of eating, drinking, sleeping, marrying, believing is the natural way or the God-given way or the only human way to live. And so this is called ethnocentrism. The word comes from also the root word for ethnic and centric, which is to be sort of centered on your own ethnicity or ethnic group. And we all have to be ethnocentric in some ways just to sort of survive and walk around. We have to think that our own way of doing things is okay or we can't, you know, we can't just be questioning what we're doing all the time or life would be hardly livable. But it becomes a problem when we consider our own way of life to be the only superior, natural, developed way of life and to consider other people's ways of life to be primitive or savage or backward or even unworthy of being human. And so to counteract that ethnocentrism, the idea of anthropology is that of cultural relativism. And what we mean by cultural relativism is that since all humans become human in a particular way, we learn how to behave. That means that our own learning of cultural behaviors must be understood in its own context. And the same with others, that we have to make sense of what people are doing from the context of their own society and their own behaviors. And so the idea of anthropology is not that we accept every different way of life, but we try to understand why it is that people are doing what they're doing and why it might make sense to people that they're doing it that way. Now, this is not the same as some sort of moral relativism, moral relativism or of what we might call philosophical relativism. Like I said, it doesn't mean we say anything goes, everything is cool as long as it's culture. No. But it means you have to first, in some ways, walk a mile in somebody else's shoes before you pass judgment on what they're doing. And so anthropology's idea is that we have to methodologically try to reach out to others and try to understand what they're doing from within their own society and within their own learned behavior and try to make sense of it that way. Again, this is not an absolute moral relativism or cultural or philosophical relativism. We may still wish to say that, you know, either within our own society 
or in other people's societies that certain behaviors are, as Muckle and Gonzalez will tell us later, maladaptive, that they aren't helpful to us. But we first have to learn why people might want to engage in those behaviors. Muckle and Gonzalez cite another anthropologist named Matthew Engelke, who wrote a book called How to Think Like an Anthropologist, that some people sometimes use in Intro to Anthropology. It's going to be uh, one of the themes of the course is how do we observe the world or think like an anthropologist. And what Engelke like Engel says is that cultural relativism is critical self-awareness. So what you're doing is you're looking at the behavior of others and you're uh, putting, you know, you're trying to figure out what it means in context, but then you're turning the lens back on yourself to sort of become self-aware of your own learned behavior and your own culture and ask if your way is the absolutely right or natural way to do things, or we might be able to learn from other people about different ways of behaving and different ways of being human and how that might impact our own lives. And so I'm hoping that you'll join me and the rest of the class on this journey through cultural relativism as critical self-awareness. And to do that, we're going to take what I, what is often the classic test of ethnocentrism. Don't worry, it's not an exam per se, but it's just an article. The next article we'll read is called Body Ritual Among the Nasi Rema. So I put that on D2L and I'll send it to you as an email attachment too. It's a short classic anthropological article about another, uh, another people. And a lot of us come into this class and we're ready to be culturally relative and we're ready not to be ethnocentric and we want to learn about other people. And then we read this article and it kind of is, uh, well, I won't, I won't spoil it. It's, uh, it's pretty intense. So that's what we'll do. So 